In order for us to go in grace, we first have to find something wrong in you. Hallelujah. You have to be able to look in the mirror and see that you need fixing. Yes. And when you look in that mirror and you see what needs fixing, you know you have some teeth to extract. What do you do? Go to the dentist. Oh, yeah. You go to the dentist because you know that this is looking good and we want to look good. This is how we make changes in our life when it comes to God. Too many times when we hear about change, we think about clothes. We want a new dress, we want a this, and that, but that is not what this is all about today. When we look around to the world that we live in, there is more sorrow than joy. Everywhere you go, somebody has something that breaks you. But we're not realizing that we are the problem. We are the problem, you know. Number one, we're not abiding by the will of God. But all we hear, I am a chosen vessel. As they say chosen, everybody has reason. But according to the word of God, we will be held accountable for the part we play in this life. God speaks to every one of us. We do not We do not We yield to our own lustful desire and temptation. And because of that, we sin and come short of the glory of God. So when God has to, Brother Cameron, to give you, uh, uh, let's say, um, upliftment on your job, you hinder yourself from getting that because God cannot get to you. Sin has put a, 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 barrier. a barrier for sin. So God cannot come to you because there is something in front here that is keeping God from you. And that goes to all of us. So in order for the Lord to bless you with the gift that he has given to you and anoint you, you have to move the edge. First, we here says we go to the fast room and we separate ourselves from the world and we stand there as in Daniel where they talk that we are eating food, we are drinking water, we drink in sips of water because of hydration, but we're not speaking to anyone and we spend time speaking to God. Yeah. Asking the Lord to grant us the strength and energy to able to overcome the barrier. You know what, what's the problem, God? Ask the Lord, lift the barrier from you. And the way get easy, you're going right back. You're going right back into it unconsciously, you know. And we're telling ourselves that he's all that in a bag of chip. And we're watching somewhere else while we house falling down. I am here to tell you today to not waste the energy on things that is not good for you, that will not take you anywhere. Do not put in that extra energy on things that will not take you anywhere, my brother. The Bible said, do not set up late. Rise up early to eat the bread of sorrow. Meaning, I want to say it this way, but I can't say it. But I want to tell you, Taro. You went to a party last night. Mm -hmm. What did you get? You set up it. You rise up early. Mm -hmm. And what is sell before you What have you gained? 
you lose that nitrous. Your blood pressure must be high. You have to see the doctor, sister, at uh, uh, general. What did you do? But if you spend time with God, only reading a word, meditating, you will gain strength to overcome. Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth. And that is the next word I want to talk. You see, this is what they call truth. Hear what Peter said. Your truth and my truth, that's a lie. Truth is truth. Mm -hmm. There is only one truth. No matter what you say, no matter what you go, no matter what happens, there is one truth. God, according to Bishop Ashby, God don't compromise with us. You have to say, God, well, you know, we're doing better next week. Although the Lord forgive you for the sin, remember you still have to pay for it. You're not understanding that at all, you know, Sister Jenna. When you go out here, I want to tell you, Father, have mercy upon me, Lord, because I've sinned and come short of the glory of God. And they tell you after that, your sins has washed away and you become that's a lie. That's a lie. David sin and come short of the glory of God. The Father said, David was a man after your own heart. He said, Forgive David. But then David did not want to pay. You have to pay. Because one rise up on top this, on top the cross and die that you and I should have died and have it more abundantly. So blood was shed. How come you want to do an update? And when you tell take you, take your children. When you tell take your children, you take your, 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 your what your great grandchildren. Because the Bible said the sin of the parents go to the third and fourth generation. You want to tell me that's a lie? Somebody has to pay. They tell you your sin washed away. Let me tell you something, brethren. Hear what the, the, the 51st Psalm said. He said, is, is it the 51st time? He said, for we have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Is that what he said? Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercy. Blot out my transgression. Wash me. Wash me. Here we say, I was born in sin and shaped in iniquity. Wash me. We're born in it. We're born in it. So how come? I always say we send the children to school, we want them to get a big degree in college, we want them to do this, but we don't want them to take out a degree with God. So when trials and tribulation meet them, they have nothing to fall back to. Because you didn't teach them who God is. Only some of my mother prayed for me, but they have a time to come that they have to pray for themselves. You didn't give them the tools. You're greedy. And today now, you want to beat them to do the right thing when you didn't encourage them. How could that be? How could that be? How? Yeah, what we do? Even though we bring them to church, we send them downstairs because we don't want them to bother us. Oh, it is too much for them! But you're giving them the laptop for four hours. But in the church, it is too much for me to comprehend. Hmm. I want to ask, who is the fool in here? You are the children. You are. Because children, minds are like a sponge. You see Lily? Lily is an example in the Ark of the Covenant. We're taking it for a joke. But I want to tell you something. Lily remind me of Lemuel. He inside of the church and can tell you where everything go. If the same thing is going to happen to Lily. If you're bringing Lily here and you're asking Lily, so and so, try it. You're going to see what she tell you. You ain't know where it is, you know. But Lily, they go and get it. Children in the mind. 
And what they have sold, they don't forget. We have to come back. Right, when we, we, we in the house of God and we just come in here because they tell us that we have to come to church. Or sometimes we say, well, I don't want to teach my parents to ask me to be upset with this Halloween. It's better you don't. Because the point is, when you come to church, you come to gain. Your Bishop Ashley, I'm not going to say, when you're coming, you mustn't go out the way say when you're coming. You must go in, go out full. Because you know you have a whole week to go. And the devil is busy. The Bible tells you he come to steal, kill, and destroy. So who want to tell you that he ain't coming at you? He coming at you. Especially when he see you healing to the temptation of your flesh. You want it, but you don't want to put in the time. You don't want to do the work in order to get from here to there. Oh, you understand it? Oh. Brethren, how? Everything, everything, brethren, is work. And the work is on yourself. We keep trying to work on other people. No work, work on you. You have to fix you. In order, and hear what you hear what the word of God said, that men may see your good work and glorify your Father which is in heaven. And he says, hey, hey. That teacher with mine come in just now. I watch teacher with mine stand up straight. I said, watch you. Where she can not see. Change the place. Slim down, come. And I see that? It's the same way we're going to see when sin start to fall off. Your language change. Your, your behavior change. When people speak to you, tell them, skin up your face. They say, hello. You're driving your car going down the road and they give you a bad drive. And before you say, God bless you. <laughs> before that, you know what we say on this side. <laughs> but when the change comes, you don't have to think about it. It is just melting out of you. Because God is a holy God. God is a loving God. God is a sweet God. He comes. And especially when you hear he said not the, you know, we don't say he said not the imps. But he said not the imps for those that sinning against him. But it has died Satan on it. But God sent his angels. And when the angels come and minister unto you. But when we stubborn, when you hear he come into us like me. Honestly, he never come nice and gentle. Just call me by the name. So I'm making sure you're making sure I recognize him. Because God knows that I stop him. That if he tells me to go and do something, I ain't gonna run and go and do it. I'm waiting. And what I'm waiting for, I don't know what I'm waiting. But sometimes the waiting is, is just you trying to get with yourself to do, you know. Because we know if you open the door, it can go to the back. So we, so we don't want to open the door because sometimes we fear what's inside. But I want to tell you, put fear aside. Put fear aside. And walk in bread as a soldier for God. Because at the end of the day, brethren, and our next experience in this video, I was sick in the hospital. Everybody coming to look for me, but their face not looking rosy and happy. And the gentleman said, you know what I hear? Take out, you better take out all this suit and sell it. She can make it. You know what I hear? But whether it's God make me here or whether it's the devil make me here, I straighten up. <laughs> you understand? I straighten up then. I say, he don't know the God I serve. I say, he don't know the God that I serve. And I start to talk to my God. Today he gone, but I still hear him. He gone! I still here. Yeah. You know the God you speak. 
Have a relationship with your God. We're talking about that. I want to tell people, get intimate with God. You know when we talk about intimate, you're only talking about the opposite. But I ain't talking about, I'm talking about get in intimate relationship with your God. So that when you're not, you don't have to wait, you know, they don't fly the blues. Because you know you're not. Get acquainted with it. The Bible here, here when they're telling you know about building yourself in grace, growing in grace. How you will grow in grace if you don't study the word? How you will grow in grace if you don't know who you are? How you will grow in grace if you don't know who, who, who your God is? My mother used to always say for me, if you know anybody, you can live with them. If I know your ways, and I can live with you. But we have to learn each other, we're living in a world where we have to learn each other, where we have to grow. It's our world with our lesson. The same lesson it says here today, and it says from the 30th heart, it says, and I'm going from the seventh verse, he said, but the heaven and the earth, which are now, by the same word, are kept in store. But anyhow, it says here, I think this is it, it says, Wherefore, the 14 verse, Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent, that ye may be found in, of him in peace. This is it. Without spot and without blemish. That is what he's coming for. He said he's coming for a prepared people. And he said he wants you without spot. And we don't finish. Because the Bible said sin cannot enter into the kingdom. What that means is, Mother Debbie, none of us enter. What that means is, none of us will not enter. Because which one of us that doesn't have a spot, Brother Jerry? You know anybody that doesn't have a spot? Do you? But remember what God says. He said, I want you without spot and blemish. You can say what you want. But I am telling you what I want. And if we stay in this matter that we have, I want to tell you none of us ain't going. Because we have in our head that we cannot be perfect. When he said, be he perfect as well? Did he say that? Did he say that? Why it is you telling yourself you can't? Why are you telling yourself you can't? Sister Charlene said a word to me. I said, and I ain't gonna say all of it because he said I can't say everything. <laughs> she said she was talking to someone, and it says, It is for every one of us. Why do you think this world is not for everybody? Everything in here is for all of us. You separate yourself from it and you want to blame somebody else. Isn't it, Sister Shelly? Yes. Don't blame nobody because you separate yourself from the goodness of the world that God has planted. Yes. God built the world for us. He said, He put everything in there for us. Yes. Everything is already here. In this world, Sister you have your little piece, you know. And then you have your husband, you have your children, you have your children. Everything is here. It's what you do inside here. But what happened to us? We like to look at other people like we always in people's business. And when come, God come now, your land has not yet cultivated. Trouble is your portion, you know. Because we do busy looking at somebody else's business and you're not taking care of you. But when you're finished now, you're talking about God. Brethren, it is not hard to serve God. You just have to stay in your lane. And you look inside of your houses like a church. I just walk in and come in and as I walk in, this is me. I watch everything in my house. Because this is my house. I don't know if it's yours, I don't know if it's yours, but I know it's my house. And when you're walking in there, you must be able to find peace. Yes, sir. 
stand here. Yes. It is my job. This is what God will do. I am the keeper. Everybody else to follow. Yes. Because I have to answer to God. Until he take me out and he bless somebody, I have to answer. Whether I go up, whether I go down, whether I fall, or whether I not. Because you know what? When something happens, you ever notice when something happens? I just notice. Everybody go home in their bed and sleep. I walk in the corridor, I can't sleep. Because I study how to fix it. Yes. They are not asking God how to fix the act. I'm calling in the car and asking me to stay the Lord. What shall I say? Where do I go? How long it will I not have? I listen to our conversation. <laughs> it tear my heart out. And when you all go to you, you know what it feels like. And I'm asking God, Father, help me. Because they are lying. They was not lying. It's the truth. But how do I fix it? Sometimes the truth hurts me like anything else. Because we know it's the truth. We have to get it together. Mm-hmm. We cannot set up friends of Let us work with Let us try to fix it so that when the day shall come, we will not ask for a clean spirit. Eighteen percent, but grow in grace. And in the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, to Him be glory, both now and forever. See me there? When you go home, when you're driving in your car, spend time with yourself. Ask the Lord, Father, I need a power to change. Because remember, if you change, I will change. Teach our will never change everything because it only takes one block, you know. You ever notice as you move one block, everything else changes. You know? Just one. You just have to take one net one and everything will be mm. So this evening the God bless you. May cause his face to shine upon us and God bless you. On the battlefield for my Lord Thank you.